What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. In this one we're going to be making adobo chicken, which is a Filipino dish that involves chicken being marinated in garlic, soy sauce, vinegar and black peppercorns. It's slightly sweet, slightly salty, slightly sour and tastes absolutely delicious. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. All right, let's start this off by putting 750 grams or 1.6 pounds of chicken thigh into a mixing bowl. And for the marinade, pour in one third of a cup or 80 milliliters of soy sauce and 110 milliliters of white vinegar. Grab yourself four garlic cloves and grate them in using a fine microplane, which will turn the garlic into a paste. And alternatively, if you don't own a microplane, the garlic can be finely diced or thinly sliced. Just as long as you get the garlic in there, that's all that matters. Then make sure to scrape all of the garlic from the microplane just so we don't waste any of that delicious flavor. Then using either some gloves, a spoon or some tongs, mix all of that together, making sure to fully coat the chicken. Chuck in three dried or four fresh bay leaves for a nice herbal flavor, making sure they're coated in the marinade so they do their job properly. Slap on some cling wrap nice and tight to lock in those flavors. And then we're going to pop this into our fridge to marinate from anywhere between one to 24 hours, the longer the better. Grab yourself one medium sized brown onion and slice off the end opposite the root. Slice the onion in half through the root and peel off the skin, making sure to save the scraps for a stock. Next, thinly slice the onion, stopping just before the root. Slice the onion through the center, again stopping at the root. Then come through and finely dice. Make sure to trim off any excess flesh from around the root to avoid wastage, as food wastage sucks. And then we can save the roots for a stock. Then with three cloves of garlic, what we're going to do is place the side of our knife onto the clove and push down to crush the garlic. Then we're just going to give it a good old rough chop. And it doesn't have to be super fine, unless of course that's what you prefer. Then last but not least, slice two whole spring onions or scallions in half, saving the bottom half for another dish. Remove any scabby ends and we can save them for a stock. And finally, thinly slice the spring onion or scallion on a slight angle to create nice little diamond shaped pieces, which we will then be using as a garnish. And of course, if you don't like this, they can be left out. When you're ready to cook, place a large heavy base skillet onto your stovetop over a high heat. And once hot, pour in one tablespoon or 15 milliliters of olive oil. Carefully add in the marinated chicken thighs, smooth side down, leaving the marinade in the bowl and sear them for one minute just to get some color onto them and you'll most likely need to do this in batches. After one minute, flip the thighs over and repeat the process, searing them for another one minute. Once that's done, remove the chicken from the pan and place them in the bowl, reserving the juices in the pan. To the pan, we're going to throw in the diced onions along with the roughly chopped garlic and saute this off in those juices for two minutes, just until we start to see some slight color on the onions, also stirring them around frequently, just so the garlic doesn't burn. Once that's achieved, pour in the chicken marinade and bay leaves, along with two tablespoons or 27 grams of brown sugar, which will add a slight sweetness and give this a great color, as well as two tablespoons or 10 grams of whole black peppercorns, which will add a piney and slightly spicy flavor. And if you wish, these can be crushed or cracked if you prefer. Give the sauce a good mix, making sure those flavors can become friends. Then pour in 300 milliliters of cold water and bring the sauce to a boil. Once boiling, turn the heat down to medium and simmer for five minutes. After five minutes, we can place in all of our seared chicken thighs smooth side down. Pour in any juices left behind from the chicken and allow this to simmer away for 15 minutes which will cook our chicken and start to reduce the sauce. In the meantime, wash one cup or 200 grams of basmati rice under cold water to remove any impurities, grit and excess starch which will cause our rice to become stodgy. Then tip the rice into a sieve and continue rinsing until the water becomes fairly clear and this should take about one minute. Once clear, give it a shake to remove any excess water and allow it to drain for a minute or two. Place a medium to large saucepan onto your stovetop and tip in the washed rice, along with one and a half cups or 375 milliliters of cold water. Add in one bay leaf for a herbal flavor, one star anise for a sweet and aniseed-like flavor, three cardamom pods for fragrance, half a cinnamon stick for a citrusy woody flavor, and half a teaspoon of sea salt flakes. Then give all of that a good stir, making sure that it's fully submerged in the water. Place the saucepan onto a high heat, and once the water's come to a boil, turn it down to a low heat, Chuck on a lid or aluminium foil if you don't have a lid and allow the rice to cook for 12 minutes, making sure to not open the lid, otherwise the steam will escape. After our chicken's been simmering away for 15 minutes, we can flip it over and repeat the same process for another 15 minutes. And by this stage, you'll notice that the sauce is changing color and becoming nice and thick. 
Then after the rice has been cooking for 12 minutes, remove it from the heat source and allow it to steam for 10 minutes and do not open the lid otherwise the steam will escape and our rice won't cook properly. We can then remove the lid being careful of the steam and remove and discard the spices. We then want to fluff up our rice using a spatula, spoon or a fork, but I do find that using a fork can actually break the rice. Then what you should have is some perfectly cooked basmati rice, which is now ready to eat. Once the chicken's been reducing for a total of 30 minutes, we can remove and discard the bay leaves, turn it off the heat and remove it from the stove. Place your beautiful rice in the center of your serving bowls, lay over that sticky and perfectly glazed chicken, spoon over that delicious and rich sauce along with those peppercorns, garnish it with the thinly sliced spring onions or scallions if you're using them, and we can then dig in. The flavours on this are absolutely fantastic. It's sweet, it's sour and salty that just balances really well together. Those black peppercorns just let off a nice little pop onto your palate and that chicken is super tender and just completely falls apart. This recipe here serves two large portions or four smallish portions and can be placed in the fridge for up to three days. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I was able to teach you something. If you did, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing if you want to see hundreds of more fantastic recipes. Thanks for watching everyone, stay safe and enjoy. Thank you.